loves so here from go with the flow art and i'm going to be doing um a bottle pour for you this afternoon which is a really nice wine glass that my wine glass a wine bottle that my friend gave to me um before we start that i'm just going to show you something quickly some of you might have seen on my previous post that i've been practicing making some artwork on glass so this is um, what I've done, I framed it and I've put lights in it as well. So I don't know if you can see that. So hopefully in the future once the um, lockdown laws have been relaxed a little bit more, um, I'm hoping to uh, maybe show you how to do that and maybe do that as a workshop maybe with some coasters um, after the feedback I had of my last workshop I think people would like to do something a bit more practical something they can give, as a friend, um, give to a friend not just a piece of art so um, just something for you to bear in mind there um, so what we're going to do is um, when I normally work on glass um, I like to put a base coat on first so this time I'm going to do black rather than white. I've done a lot of white backgrounds recently on vases and things like that. So we're going to try black and I'm going to apply it all over um, with a sponge and the reason for that is so that once we do the pour over the bottle it'll run um, all over um, where the black is because sometimes I've noticed when you pour this just going straight onto the glass and you haven't done a base colour um, it'll just go down like this and you'll have gaps everywhere and then it can be a little bit difficult to fill in the gaps. Um, so I'll let me show you through the colours that we're doing. Um, this is um, Blaze Orange. Give you a close up of that. Looks quite pale now but normally dries darker. This is yellow aqua. And this is iridescent copper. So I think they'll work well against the black, but we will find out. And what I did also do was I put a little bit of this pearlescent tinting. Um, into the orange um, just to make that one sing a little bit I think I thought that would be a good idea so I'm gonna take the camera down for a bit of a closer look on the bottle and then we'll make a start So the paint that I'm using, um, the acrylic paints I'm using, I'm, I just mixed them up exactly the same as I would if I was doing any other acrylic pour. And my pouring medium is 80% um, PVA glue and 20% water. So before I started this, um, I wondered what I was going to do so I could move the bottle around easier. Um, because my glass vases that I've done before I normally do upside down and with a wine bottle um, I think if you tried to get it balancing upside down you'd probably knock it over pretty quick so my solution was to get a palette knife um, I wrapped a carrier bag around it and then I pushed it down until it jammed so I had something to give me a bit of leverage as I was working and that worked that worked pretty well and then I've got my rack, um, my metal rack ready to lift it onto um, when I'm done. So using a small tin foil tray, baking tray is really useful um, because when you're done you can um, easily um, get that paint back out if you want to reuse it on something else and also because 
it's holding it all in the same place when I'm using the syringe here it's really easy for me to suck it back at the syringe and reuse it um, I decided that I would use a syringe around the top of the bottleneck to make sure that I didn't accidentally tip any down inside the bottle or get it on the handle and with my leftover paints I just got some coasters and um, sponged around the outside of the coasters with black first and then dipped them upside down into the foil tray and so they should match the bottle very very well I think so this is the bottle when it's still wet so hopefully when this is dry um, we'll get some get some nice reflections of candle lights and other lights that we put around it and we'll put a cork in it too and see what that looks like right so this is the second bottle that I'm gonna do it's really really lovely um, and I'm not gonna do it this, exactly the same as the one before because um, I want it to match as in the colors are gonna match um, but I don't want it to be the same design because that would just be a little bit boring um, so this one hopefully can be lit up with um, a cork, a light cork, I don't know if you've seen one of those um, and um, you feed the lights in down into the top, put the cork in and then the switch is on the top so with this one I'm hoping to light it up and then hopefully the light will reflect onto the previous one and if people like candles and things like that then the first one will be just a really nice ornament to um, sit next to this one so um, I'm gonna do this differently and I'm gonna do some pouring but not a lot and then for the middle section in between here and the bottom bit where my hand is um, I'm going to do some balloon work. I've been doing a lot of balloon work recently and practicing um, doing that on glass, not on canvas, just on glass. So <laughs> I have a little tiny, tiny little one. It's cute. And um, I have a big one. I'm talking about a balloon here. I've got a big balloon. And also, um, just to say, which I didn't say in the first one, you need to have things like these handy as well as skewers and um, cocktail sticks so if you see your hair get in there dive in get out straight away and this is really good so that if something goes where you don't want it you can just push it on and then just twirl it slowly and it'll scoop up and absorb um, the bit of paint that you didn't want so yes let's get started on the second one so accidentally I didn't um, record this next bit so I'll just talk you through what I've done and um, basically the only difference is is that the bottom bit I sponged black and then um, I poured the remainder paint from the first pour over the black on the bottom um, dried that off a little bit with the um, blowtorch and then turned it the other way around and then the leftover paint I used to pour over the bottom end of the bottle but this time you can see it's much more translucent translucent because I haven't used the black underneath so in the middle now I'm just circling um, with my balloon some black and just being quite careful that I'm not going up um, to the edges of the other paint to spoil the previous pouring that I've done on it and I'm just doing circles with the balloon and I'm trying to spread that paint out as much as I can so it's going to be a thin layer not thick like when you've sponged it over previously um, don't worry about the spaces either side um, as um, we can sort them um, out later on but for now you just need to keep dipping the balloon in the um, the black and the black paint is not just acrylic paint again it's mixed with your pouring medium so now I'm gonna fill in the spaces um, at the top and down at the bottom um, here I think I'm just touching up where I've just accidentally gone over the edges um, and then I'm just needing to finish off a little bit with a balloon I'm nearly there So 
so now I'm gonna just take a little bit of every one of the paints from previous from the previous bottle that we had and we're going to use the yellow ochre the copper and the orange um, and we've made just little tiny puddles on the side to dip the balloon into and we're gonna keep um, just slightly touching pressing the balloon onto the bottle over the black and I'm every time I dip the balloon in I am pressing down at least four or five times to try and get as much as the of the paint off the balloon as I can before dipping into a different color and long, as long as you keep alternating colors then you won't get one more color being um, more dominant than the others um, so you just need to keep on going until you filled in all the gaps and you're not really seeing much of the black um, coming through anymore and then eventually um, you can see the paint is looking a little bit drippy it's coming together in big drips so I wipe my balloon clean got some paper towel and then I'm switching to actually now taking the paint off and every time I take the balloon off the bottle I'm wiping it clean so I'm using the balloon now just to lift off those drippy bits and keep on wiping the balloon into the paper towel so that we're not having um, those thick drippy bits looking um, they were just not looking very even um, and I've just gone over it with a blowtorch to help dry it off and now I'm going to touch up the spaces in between just just doing circles just dabbing on um, small circles with the earbud and just turning it around each time if I was to do this again I'd probably tape the plastic to the table really really taut because every now and again as I was turning it the paint was catching on the plastic underneath so that's um, something to bear in mind for another time anyway um, eventually we get there and this is the end result both of them are looking good I think with the lights in and you can see that the second bottle is much more um, translucent than the first one but they both provide an interesting contrast so I'm really really pleased with these